this is Dr. Laurie Santos from the Happiness Lab. Many people have questions about how to improve levels of happiness. Living a healthy lifestyle is one sure way of increasing happiness, and a good place to start is with your oral health. Just a few small changes to your oral care routine, such as changing your toothpaste to Colgate Total, can lead to beneficial changes in your oral health. Colgate Total helps stop oral health problems like gingivitis and cavities before they start, because preventing oral health problems is a lot easier than treating them. Be dentist ready and get Colgate Total at shop.colgate.com total. Tune into the podcast, I Choose Me with Jenny Garth, as the Beverly Hills 90210 alum explores the transformative power of those three words. Discover how you too can choose health, healing, and happiness and be the star of your own life. I'm Jenny Garth, and I have a brand new podcast called I Choose Me. Join me each week as I continue my quest for contentment and gratitude. Listen to I Choose Me with Jenny Garth on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. For decades, the mafia had New York City in a stranglehold, with law enforcement seemingly powerless to intervene. It uses terror to extort people. But the murder of Carmichael Galanti marked the beginning of the end. It sent the message that we can prosecute these people. Listen to Law & Order Criminal Justice System on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Renee Stubbs, and I'm obsessed with sports, especially tennis. Tune in to my podcast each week to hear me and my friends in the community break down the latest matches, including the U.S. Open. Plus, hear from some of the biggest names in the sport about what the future holds. It's about belief, and once you break through that, right. then you know you can win a Grand Slam. Listen to the Renee Stubbs Tennis Podcast every Monday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Presented by Capital One, founding partner of iHeart Women's Sports. Ever wonder what it takes to be a professional athlete? Or how the best in the sport are taking those skills to elevate women's sports to a whole new level? I'm Tiffany Oshinsky, host of League One Volleyball's podcast, Serving Pancakes. Get ready for some unfiltered analysis and authentic conversations about the sport itself and what it takes to stand on the podium. I'll be joined by top athletes and figureheads in sports as we dive deep into match play, mindset, and memories from years past. And you can guarantee that pancakes will be on the menu. Listen to Serving Pancakes on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, everyone. It's Amanda Rieger Green. Welcome to Soul Sessions and welcome to Mercury Direct. Hallelujah. And September. The energy is changing, but not quite yet. <laughs> so let's not get ahead of ourselves, but also let me set the stage for you because there is so much empowerment and excitement this month, astrologically, numerologically, energetically. I'm thrilled to share this stuff with you and insights into harnessing your magic because that's what this is all about. It's your own empowerment, your own sovereignty. Hello, we're in an eight year in numerology. It's like go big or go home. And the stuff that scares you to death or brings up your deepest fears and pains and traumas, that stuff is gold. I know it doesn't feel like it when you're in it. I go through it too. But then it's like, what am I learning from this? And how can I dig deeper? Because I want to go further and higher and brighter. And that's my wish for you all too. And I love the feedback I get from everyone, the light bulbs that are turning on, and especially the questions. I love the synergistic stuff like, oh my gosh, I can't believe my soul urge number is a 33. I can't, y'all, it's so funny. All the people that listen to the soul urge podcast that were 33s in their soul urge, you know, the master number 33, the master healer, they're like, my number is a 33. And I'm like, yes, it's a blessing and a pain in the behind because it comes with like a big karmic lesson. It's heavy and beautiful. I mean, these are like angels on earth, right? And how do you harness that over? 
a lifetime. <laughs> you know, no big deal. But I, I love that. But I also love when people are like, I don't get it. I don't resonate with it. You know, and I get a few of those and those light me up as much because it's like, oh, you get to scratch the surface and you're asking the questions and you're curious. So any questions that come I welcome them. And we are going to follow up and do some Q&A with questions that have come in, some numerology questions, some intuition questions, some love questions. So be on the lookout for that. But let's dive into the energy this month. Mercury stations direct today. If this is when this podcast is being released, Wednesday, August the 28th. And it's in the evening, but Mercury will be moving direct in the sky. But what I want you to remember It's stationing direct at 21 degrees of Leo. And if you remember back when we talked about Mercury's retrograde this phase, it was in Virgo and then it backed up into Leo. Virgo, you know, practicality, getting everything kind of in order and aligned. And then Leo, heart's desires, what's buried deep down there? What's coming up from you, like from the depths of your soul? And that's partly why I did the soul urge number in numerology, just to get into those deep desires and things that might be trapped or buried within you that are part of your longer destiny, your calling, your evolution. So with Mercury stationing direct on the 28th, and it happens in the evening. So remember this, when Mercury stations the few days before and the few days after, they're whack, they're wonky. It's not like, oh, I'm firing and wiring and everything is great. It's actually a time of paying attention because any insights, any setbacks, any re-fill in the blanks, reconfigurations, redo, revise, it's like a punctuation point. And as Mercury stations on the 28th, it's going to be moving slow. It takes a minute for it to go eh, 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 like it adjusts on its orbit. That's the way I think it's. it slows down. So it personifies the energy of Mercury. And guess what? Let's just add some fuel to the fire. Uranus is stationing to go retrograde on September 1st. If Mercury is the planet of communication, information gathering and sharing, intelligence, day-to-day travel, correspondence, IT, things like that, the glitches, the day-to-day, the communication, the radio frequencies, the radio waves, Uranus is the higher octave of that. Uranus is electricity. It's lightning bolt energy. It is radical shifts and changes, genius coming through in like boom, crack, wow, bam, lightning bolt energy. You know how when I talk about numerology and we talk about master numbers, like the 11, 22, or 33, and I always say, hey, if you have an 11 or you see an 11, don't forget the base frequency. You know, if the 11, one plus one is two, the two is pretty critical. It's the base energy. It's the foundation in order to access clearer, easier, more cognitively the energy of the 11. Same with the 22, the 33, two plus two is four. So four and 22, 33 would be the six and then the 33. Well, the planets have that function too. So you've got Mercury, intelligence, day-to-day communication, the cognitive brain. Uranus is like divine, radical, rapid insights coming down from the heavens, lightning bolt energy. And that energy, it's not like permeating your whole day, your whole life. It's like a lightning bolt and it's shock and awe or destruction and then it's gone. It radiates pretty fast. So it's like when you get an insight or an idea and you're like, Eureka or oh, shit, excuse me. But like that's kind of it's like Eureka or oh, shit energy. Okay, like it just is. It's like reaction and awe inspiration at the same time. So when we have these two planets that are basically standing still punctuated in the sky right now, pay attention because if it's frustrating the heck out of you, if it is ruffling your feathers and eating your lunch, pay attention. If it is like, oh my gosh, I get it. This is what I want to do. Pay attention to that too. So take notes between now and early September, like the 4th, 5th, 6th. Pay attention 
because as Mercury moves direct, so it will move back over the degrees in which it traveled, it moved direct and then it moved retrograde and now it's moving direct again. So it's done these three passes of all these degrees between Leo and Virgo. It won't be out of that shadow is what we call it, the post shadow phase until, let's see, September 9th, Mercury moves into Virgo. So it will have moved through all those degrees of Leo by September 9th, and then it moves into Virgo. And if you remember, Mercury stationed retrograde at four degrees of Virgo. So it has about four degrees of Virgo before it moves into fresh territory. So after the 9th and maybe let's say the 16th, like arbitrarily, right around there, mid-month, mid-September, it's like fresh ammo, fresh insight, fresh drive. So be patient with yourself, but really like review the data you gathered. What did you learn? What aggravated you and what enlightened you? Pay attention, but especially in these next few days and into the beginning of the month because some other things are going on. And I'm going to outline some key dates and some key events in the astrology for the month of September. We're also entering eclipse season. It's that time again. And we've got some different energy with the eclipses coming up, which I am excited about and curious about. And I hope you are too. More to come on that shortly. But the other thing that's going on, which, you know, rocks my world is we are in the capstone month of numerology. September is the month where In universal numerology, you all know we're in an eight year. So guess what September is? An eight universal month. So we've got the eight, eight code. It gets real, like stuff comes together. Stuff starts to clarify, amp up, solidify, like the mojo is rising. But whatever your personal year is in numerology, so if you're in a six personal year, September is your sixth personal month. If you're in a nine personal year, (laughs) have fun because the nine is about completion and letting go. And it's like, oh, things are coming to completion or at least the integrity around your way forward. So September is really a key month. And I will do a whole episode next week on the capstone month in numerology. I'll run through the numbers. There's also a great blog, which is linked in the show notes for this week called September, the capstone month in numerology. And it goes through each of the numbers. It gives you a good detail. So if you're like chomping at the bit and ready to think about it and get get all your ducks in a row, I mean, hello, the sun is in Virgo. Like, (laughs) I hope you're excited to like get your groove on and your health and wellness on and dive into the analysis of things because that's how I feel. I love Virgo season. Sometimes it drives me nuts, but I love it too, just like all the signs, right? But anyway, check that blog out and then there'll be a podcast next week and we'll dive into it a little deeper. And if you have any questions, definitely reach out and let us know. So we're in an eight month in numerology in an eight year, eight, eight code. I would encourage you to go back to the episode where I talk about the energy of the eight at the beginning of the year. Because that's a great place to go, okay, what is the eight about? It's about empowerment. It's about abundance. It is about taking risk. It's about summoning your inner mojo and your courage. It is about expanding your faith, your life, your resources, your money. I mean, it is really about the expansion of inner richness and wealth and then creating that materially. So it's sometimes chicken and egg energy. Sometimes there is external expansion and sometimes you can feel depleted internally. So there's also always balance that comes with the eight. And I think that September is a great month to think about balancing things out in your life. What is out of whack? What is out of balance? What needs fine tuning and to redefine and clarify your goals? And guess what? You can thank Mercury Retrograde for pushing you up until this moment to revise, revisit, restructure, you know, doing all that work that we do in Mercury Retrograde. It's like it set us up to get clear so we can really utilize 
the empowerment that is gifted to us to rise up and reach for this year because it feels like a surge of energy and the energy is rapid fire right now, which can also be exhaustive. And that's why I'm sharing with you, check yourself on your balance internally, externally, your life, your work, your family, your responsibilities. How are you practicing your self-care? What feels out of balance in your life? Ask yourself that. That's a great checkpoint is what feels out of balance and get honest. Like this is not for you to ask your friends. This is for you to ask you what is out of balance and get the courage and the, you know, cojones to get honest about what's out of balance. Is it my romantic relationship? Is it the stress that I'm having with a teenager and I'm tired of fighting or pushing or whatever it is? Or is it my freaking boss and my job that I'm so over or burn out with the schedule? Whatever it is. Get really honest about it and where you can take new action or at minimum, shift your perspective. That's key. I'll give this reminder because I do often, you all know there's dichotomy in the eight. So if the, the lessons are about expansion and growing your faith and taking risk, bold, abundance, manifestation, it's also about the lack thereof, the disempowerment, the dis-ease, the fear on the other side of faith. And that stuff is just as important. So if you aren't sure where your life might be imbalanced, look at where you're feeling disempowered or you're afraid. Like, what am I afraid of today? Like, what really creates fear in me? Is it vulnerability? Is it being honest with myself about an addiction. And I tell you what, what gets exacerbated in the 8-8 energy are things like addiction. And I mean, hello, addiction comes in in many forms, right? I mean, I know that we automatically go to like drugs and alcohol, but screen time, television, gossip, toxic relationships, workaholism, food, sex, it's those secrets that eat away at us. So anything that's eating away at you that feels really like this is mine, you know, or this behavior, I'm going to keep doing it because it feels so good. That's the kind of stuff you want to pay attention to this month. Because if you can shift something, even make a decision that you want to heal or change, I mean, the sun is in Virgo, which is all about purification, health and wellness, and being of service. And I'll talk about that a little bit more and we'll dive into Virgo here. But the eight is very powerful. So more to come on the capstone month in numerology. I'll go into each of the numbers and we'll dive a little bit more into the eight and how you can strategize around that. Okay, let's talk about the astrology. It began as a three-word line spoken by Kelly Taylor, Jenny Garth's character on Beverly Hills 90210, but it became her own formula for personal fulfillment and the rallying cry of an entire movement. The phrase, I choose me, has come to mean so much to so many. It embodies self-care and self-love. I'm Jenny Garth, and I have a brand new podcast called I Choose Me. What started as a line in a script has become a guiding force for me. I've learned that loving yourself is not selfish. Tune into the podcast, I Choose Me with Jenny Garth, as she continues her quest for contentment and gratitude and leads you on an exploration of the transformative power of those three words. You'll learn how you too can choose health, healing, and happiness to be the star of your own life and watch everything around you improve. Join me each week as I continue my quest for contentment and gratitude. Come along and live by the words, I Choose Me. Listen to I Choose Me with Jenny Garth on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. For decades, the mafia had New York City in a stranglehold, with law enforcement seemingly powerless to intervene. It uses terror to extort people. But the murder of Carmike Galanti marked the beginning of the end, sparking a chain of events that would ultimately dismantle the most powerful crime organization in American history. It sent the message to them that we can prosecute these people. Discover how a group of young prosecutors took on the mafia. 
and with the help of law enforcement, brought down its most powerful figures. These bosses on the commission had no idea what was coming their way from the federal government. From Wolf Entertainment and iHeart Podcasts, this is Law & Order Criminal Justice System. Listen to Law & Order Criminal Justice System on the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Ever wonder what it takes to be a professional athlete? Or how the best in sport are taking those skills to elevate women's sports to a whole new level? I'm Tiffany Oshinsky, host of League One Volleyball's podcast, Serving Pancakes, a new show by iHeart Women's Sports. Get ready for some unfiltered analysis and authentic conversations about volleyball and beyond. Learn what it takes to be the best in the sport and what it takes to stand on the podium from top athletes and figureheads in sports. Every week, I'll dig into the perspectives from some of the best athletes in the world, like with Olympic gold medalist Justine Wong. I will say my journey has not been easy, like whatsoever. I've I've been cut from teams, I've made teams, I've been the starter, I've been a non-starter. And so for me to like say that I made the Olympics, like I immediately started crying. And give insights and behind the scenes stories from the people who are making the biggest impacts on global volleyball and women's sports from the likes of three-time Olympic medalist, Jordan Larson. I'm finding little ways to like do things differently. And now it's more of how can I help the next generation? You'll also learn about their other dream jobs if they weren't playing on the biggest stage, like from Olympian Lauren Carlini. I'm thinking about starting a dog walking business, Just putting that out there um, <laughs> for anyone's dogs who need to be walked or watched or fed or played with. Listen to Serving Pancakes on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Imagine having more time to yourself this evening while waking to a happy, well-rested child tomorrow. Welcome to Sleep Tight Stories, a calming bedtime podcast that brings cuddles and comfort to families worldwide. Each episode is narrated by me, Cheryl McLeod, a second grade teacher, and written by my husband, Clark, a second grader at heart. Our stories spark imagination without overstimulation. Many listeners report falling asleep within 10 minutes of tuning in leaving parents with more time to decompress after a busy day. When your child is rested, you will be too. Listen to Sleep Tight Stories on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Sleep tight. Welcome to Cheaters and Backstabbers. I'm Shadi Diaz. And I'm Kate Robards. And we are New York City stand-up comedians and best friends. And we love a good cheating and backstabbing story. So this is a series where our guests reveal their most shocking cheating stories. Join us as we learn how to avoid getting our hearts broken or our backs slashed. Listen to Cheaters and Backstabbers on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Let's talk about the astrology. So Mercury stations direct on the 28th of August. And on the 29th, Venus moves into Libra. And I will tell you what, I have to say this, like it's been itching at me and kind of hacked me off. <laughs> and I say that as I laugh, because when it's something hacks me off, it's like, okay, Amanda, why? I heard an astrologer and she was like, if you're not enjoying this season and you're just not feeling your beauty and your romance and, and your passion, it's because Venus is in Virgo and it's just boring there. It's in its deficit. But my natal Venus is in Virgo. Freaking Kim Kardashian's natal Venus is in Virgo. Sexiest woman like you can just think of. I mean, come on, like at surface level, I'm just, you know, like calling a spade a spade. But I know how it is kind of a pain in the behind to have my natal Venus in Virgo because Virgo is so analytical, judgmental, critical, perfectionist. And when your love planet, your romance planet, your finance planet is in like the perfectionist, nitpicky, you know, purification sign, it is in a deficit. I knew what she was saying, but I was like, I got defensive because I'm like, but my natal Venus is in Virgo. We are, we're amazing. We create order 
out of chaos. And we create beauty from chaos. And that is the virtue of Venus being in Virgo, is it creates not only order out of chaos, which is one of the cornerstones of Virgo season, by the way, but Venus in Virgo creates beauty from chaos at its best. It purifies the chaos. It distills it into something poetic, beautiful, articulate, fine-tuned, and at its highest, virtuous. So yes, it might have been a little boring on the romance side or choppy, but when Venus moves into Libra, and all of that to say this, we get a reprieve because Venus rules Libra. Beauty, balance, harmony, relationships. So there's a focus on that as Venus transits through Libra. So it's a good time to tell the people you love, you love them, or to take some time for the beautification of your life. Where do you see beauty? Is it in nature? Is it in the people you love, your family? Is it in art? Where do you find beauty? Prioritize it, cultivate it, notice it, and feel it. Because when Venus works in Libra, there's also this opportunity for creating balance, harmony, peace, which, hello, goes with the numerology of the eight, which I was talking about a bit. But what I love about it is also it's really good for the nervous system. So notice beautiful things or things that are beautiful to you, however that shows up. And I don't care if it's a lip kit palette or a contour palette and you're like, oh my gosh, you got to have that contour. I don't care if it's vain or superficial. If it brings beauty and joy and just like, oh, this is so amazing, I've got to have this or or again, a sunset, whatever it is that brings beauty into your life, honor it, honor it. It's not superficial, it's important and it's important for your nervous system. So as we move into September, September 1st is a big ass day. No way around it. Lots of sizzle crack pop in the atmosphere. Uranus stations retrograde at 27 degrees of Taurus. I would find out where that is in your natal chart. And if you don't know your natal chart, get your natal chart. Where does 27 degrees in your house system fall in Taurus? That's where Uranus is standing still, punctuating your chart. It's Taurus. So Taurus is earth energy. So earthquakes, lightning storms, tsunamis. Uranus also rules aviation and technology. So there can be some glitches on a bigger scale. So if you're traveling around September 1st, pack a little patience. When I travel, I set my intentions very clearly that it's going to be smooth, that it's going to be easy, and that I'm grateful for the personnel who knows what they're doing and they illuminate the way and it's healthy and safe for everyone involved and it's seamless. You could do that always, but if you are traveling around those dates, and, and also if you're just driving, be a little cautious because the energy is kind of erratic, so weird, wacky things can happen. But find out where it is in your chart because what's interesting about Uranus stationing, remember I said Uranus is like genius lightning bolt energy, but it can also shatter something that needs to be destroyed in, in order for something new to grow. So pay attention the last couple of days of August into the first few days of September of anything that is awakening in you or anything that is breaking down because it's kind of on a bigger evolutionary track for you and your growth forward the remainder of the year and beyond. So just pay attention to that. Take some notes. Also, Pluto has been retrograde, but it is backing into Capricorn. And this is big time significant because Pluto will back into Capricorn for its last rodeo. It'll be in Capricorn until early November. I can't remember the exact date. It basically hovers at the anoretic degree, the last degree, 29 degrees of Capricorn, moving into the beginning of September. And it's basically just on that 29th degree. And then it stations direct, I think it's like October 11th or 12th, somewhere right around there. And it will move back into Aquarius in November. And once it moves back into Aquarius in November, 
it will not be in Capricorn in our lifetimes ever again, like for 250 years, something like that. So this is significant. And Capricorn is top-down leadership. It rules our political systems, our hospital systems, school systems, top-down dominance, patriarchy, rulership. So it may feel on a collective level like we are backpedaling and moving backwards. It's so interestingly timed, you know, and all the astrologers snicker about this because it's like we've got to go through some breakdown before we can move forward. Things need to be broken down. So anything on a bigger social scale that is happening instead of jumping in and fighting, it's like, wait a minute, what can I do? You know, how can I fine tune my beliefs? How can I, on a personal level, reclaim my sovereignty to build a greater future for humanity? Because there will be momentum in not just perfectly in November, but onward for the next 20 years. Like things are fundamentally changing. And it's just important to take note of that. So that's September 1st. And then there's a new moon, a Virgo new moon on the 2nd, and it's at 11 degrees of Virgo. You know, I always look at the degrees because I want to know where they are in my natal chart and for clients, things like that. But also, I look at the numerology of the degrees all the time, and it's an 11, for goodness sakes. So that tells me, uh, yes, I'll figure out where 11 degrees, I already know where 11 degrees of Virgo is in my chart, because I know it, and I know some of you do too. But 11, hello, there's a master number, and there's that number two again, balance and harmony. But the 11 is about the interconnection of the spiritual you and the human you. It is the interconnection of heaven and earth, essentially. It's a portal energy. And with Virgo and us entering into eclipse season, because we will have a full moon lunar eclipse on September 17th in Pisces. And this is starting to usher in. It's like a precursor energy of what will come in the next year and a half, couple of years with the nodes of the moon. There'll be some shifts and changes in where we will really be working with Piscean and Virgo energy. So this is a little precognitive energy this month. But the axis of Virgo and Pisces are ultimately about health and wellness. Pisces being about your spiritual health, the more energetic, unconscious parts of you, and Virgo being about the practical day-to-day -day business, the routines of your life. What can I do to take charge of my health, wellness, and well-being. And for this new moon on September 2nd, I encourage you. I mean, it is the new moon of starting a new routine. And anything that adds value to your health and wellness, you don't have to tackle everything. It's like, what's one thing that I am ready to heal? And how can I plant seeds, set intentions, around my energy and my focus and dedication to purifying, healing, creating wellness in this area of my life. And that is really the cornerstone of this new moon. So it's a great time too, because Virgo is about organization and practicality, taking action. So this is the new moon where I always clean something up, literally. Like I'm usually doing a house cleaning of the head and the heart. And that is like the juice of it, right? It is a, a cleaning of the head and the heart. And that's what the eclipse will be about it is really about kind of a six month cycle of spiritual cleansing and clearing in a multitude of ways. And I'll do an update later in the month where I dive into that eclipse because I think it's very worthy of that. But remember this, for the eclipse, the full moon eclipse that happens on the 17th, we also have Saturn in Pisces, and it's a Pisces full moon eclipse. So we've got this juju from Saturn, which is kind of like Virgo energy. Get your ducks in a row. Get practical. Get consistent. Saturn is like, pull yourself together and 
take some responsibility and do it diligently and conscientiously. I mean, it's, you know, patriarchal and top down. That's a part of our psychology, right? These masculine parts of our psychology. And Pisces is like, I just want to be lovey-dovey and whimsical and can't everybody just get along and can't we just dream and create and talk about all the spiritual things, which we love this about Pisces, right? But there's got to be a balance. So there's this beautiful theme of balance that I see coming in in the months ahead. And funny enough, we'll have a new moon eclipse in October in Libra. So balance is everywhere right now. But right now, the exacerbation of it, where we're being called to action, is in our health and wellness. Mind, body, spirit, health, wellness. And what is the motivating factor behind Virgo? apart from its purification and its virtue, it's truly about how can I be useful? How can I be of service? How do I feel like a whole human being where I add value? I am of service. And you know what? Service can come in a multitude of ways. So I think the new moon on the second is a wonderful new moon to think about how you can selflessly generously from your heart be of service, whether it's paying something forward, a random act of kindness, reaching out to a friend who needs a little TLC, making soup for your neighbor, however that shows up for you. You don't need to do 15 acts of kindness. Do something that you want to do because you can. And it's not for recognition. It's because why wouldn't I? This feels good to give and it feels productive. It feels useful. And I'll close with this on the Virgo business and the Virgo new moon. It began as a three-word line spoken by Kelly Taylor, Jenny Garth's character on Beverly Hills 90210. But it became her own formula for personal fulfillment and the rallying cry of an entire movement. The phrase, I choose me, has come to mean so much to so many. It embodies self-care and self-love. I'm Jenny Garth, and I have a brand new podcast called I Choose Me. What started as a line in a script has become a guiding force for me. I've learned that loving yourself is not selfish. Tune into the podcast I Choose Me with Jenny Garth as she continues her quest for contentment and gratitude and leads you on an exploration of the transformative power of those three words. You'll learn how you too can choose health, healing, and happiness to be the star of your own life and watch everything around you improve. Join me each week as I continue my quest for contentment and gratitude. Come along and live by the words, I choose me. Listen to I Choose Me with Jenny Garth on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. For decades, the mafia had New York City in a stranglehold, with law enforcement seemingly powerless to intervene. It uses terror to extort people. But the murder of Carmichael Galanti marked the beginning of the end sparking a chain of events that would ultimately dismantle the most powerful crime organization in American history. It sent the message to them that we can prosecute these people. Discover how a group of young prosecutors took on the mafia and with the help of law enforcement brought down its most powerful figures. These bosses on the commission had no idea what was coming their way from the federal government. From Wolf Entertainment and iHeart Podcasts, this is Law & Order Criminal Justice System. Listen to Law & Order Criminal Justice System on the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Imagine having more time to yourself this evening while waking to a happy, well-rested child tomorrow. Welcome to Sleep Tight Stories, a calming bedtime podcast that brings cuddles and comfort to families worldwide. Each episode is narrated by me, Cheryl McLeod, a second grade teacher, and written by my husband, Clark, a second grader at heart. Our stories spark imagination without overstimulation. Many listeners report falling asleep within 10 minutes of tuning in leaving parents with more time to decompress after a busy day. When your child is rested, you will be too. Listen to Sleep Tight Stories on the iHeartRadio app, 
Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Sleep tight. Welcome to Cheaters and Backstabbers. I'm Shadi Diaz. And I'm Kate Robarts. And we are New York City stand-up comedians and best friends. And we love a good cheating and backstabbing story. So this is a series where our guests reveal their most shocking cheating stories. Join us as we learn how to avoid getting our hearts broken or our backs slashed. Listen to Cheaters and Backstabbers on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Senora Sex Ed is not your mommy's sex talk. This show is La Platica like you've never heard it before. We're breaking the stigma and silence around sex and sexuality in Latinx communities. This podcast is an intergenerational conversation between Latinas from Gen X to Gen Z. We're covering everything from body image to representation in film and television. We even interview iconic Latinas like Puerto Rican actress Ana Ortiz. I felt in control of my own physical body and my own self. I was on birth control. I had sort of had a, my first sexual experience. If you're in your senora era or know someone who is, then this is the show for you. We're your hosts, Diosa and Mala, and you might recognize us from our flagship podcast, Locatora Radio. We're so excited for you to hear our brand new podcast, Senora Sex Ed. Listen to Senora Sex Ed on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast. What I love about Virgo energy is the satisfaction of a job well done. So like when I clean something out, it's not just about the literal, you know, cleaning the dishes or whatever, you know, my cl- part of my closet or, put, you know, reorganizing something. When I do it, and I do it intentionally, I also am like, oh, I got that accomplished. I got that done. Oh, that feels so good. And satisfaction for me creates this element of fulfillment. And I already shared with you all, my Venus is in Virgo. So there's also beauty associated with that for me. When I complete a task, I know this about me. It's like, ah, that feels so good. It doesn't just feel satisfying or fulfilling. Oh, this feels peaceful. It feels beautiful. And when I know those things about my psyche, my astrology, my psychology, and then I'm like, oh, this looks so beautiful. I feel beautiful. Oh, I feel peaceful. This organization created peace. I just am winning on the nervous system checklist for myself. So that's why I encourage you to think about beauty and your nervous system, the satisfaction of a job well done, fulfillment, wholeness. There's a lot of juice in Virgo. On September 9th, Mercury will move into Virgo. Remember I said that. And just remember, it'll be in those first four degrees of Virgo a few days. And so it's still Mercury is tracking over that phase that it went in the retrograde season, but once it hits about five degrees, we're in new territory. And I I don't know exactly when that is. It's probably around the 15th or the 16th. So just know that. The 17th, we have the full moon lunar eclipse. September 22nd, the sun moves into Libra. So we move into balance, beauty, relationships, harmony, and then, you know, people pleasing, being too amenable, backing down from conflict and denying our own truth, ourselves for the sake of peace. There's plenty of shadow with Libra. So we'll we'll talk more about those attributes in the time to come. Venus is moving pretty rapidly in the sky. So you get that beautiful Venus in Libra until the 22nd. And on the 22nd, Venus moves into Scorpio. <laughs> And for any of you out there who have your natal Venus in Scorpio and you know it, you know, like, you know what I'm talking about. Y'all are like the passionate, possessive, all in lovers, right? It's like, if I'm going to love, I'm going to love you all the way and more. I mean, it's a sexy energy. Venus in Libra is like sensual and beautiful. And like Scorpio is like, yeah, let's do this. Like, let's get our, let's get it on. Like it's passionate. And I love Venus in Scorpio because it's penetrating and it wants to go deep, but it also goes so deep that it can be exhaustive and it can push too hard and be too possessive and need you to prove too much. So 
Just be mindful that there's some spicy energy from the 22nd on with Venus moving through Scorpio. And on the 26th, Mercury will move into Libra. So we have beautiful balance. And when Mercury transits Libra, and Libra is an air sign, Mercury is air energy, mind, intelligence. There's this air of diplomacy, things being fair. So usually what comes up, things being unfair, (laughs) you know, it's like, okay, well, do I need to shift my attitude? Do I need to assert myself? What is acceptable? What is unacceptable to me? So with Mercury in Libra, the mind is firing, but it really does have a focus on fairness and diplomacy. And what's funny about this is with Pluto moving backwards into Capricorn, I mean, like we might kind of get lit up and get on fire around some things, around politics and people's beliefs and opinions. So if I'm going to give some a suggestion, I would really like watch yourself on social media. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't express yourself, share your ideas, but if it's not a fight worth having or you don't have a dog in the hunt or it's not worth putting out there in the world, check your motive. Does this need to be said? Does it need to be said by me in this forum? Am I fighting just to fight or is my voice necessary here? And really paying attention to your your deepest inner beliefs and desires and where you're choosing to intelligently and consciously use your energy and your voice. So think about that. That's important. I love the energy this month for us. I think there's going to be some revelation, some shock, some shift in perspective, but it feels like tons of momentum. And with eclipse season amping up and the full moon eclipse in Pisces, it's such a psychic full moon that I think it can be very prophetic. It can bring up a tremendous amount of karmic or spiritual healing. That's why I will dedicate an episode to that full moon eclipse and gearing up for eclipse season and how to utilize it to your highest good, but also for the greatest good. Because between now and through October, It feels very enriching to me, like we are really starting to notice a difference in ourselves, in our motivation, an evolution in our personal meaning. And it's like the universe is saying to us, all right, what are you going to do about that? How are you going to walk your walk and talk your talk? And with the eight, and it being an eight month in an eight year I'm going to say something that I haven't said in a while about the energy of the eight. You reap what you sow. It's not like, okay, if you messed up, then you got a bunch of crap coming for you. But I want you to think about that in terms of being intentional in who you are, how you live, how you show up, how honest you get with yourself. So there's this earnestness within that says, yeah, I want to heal that. I want to change my behavior around this. Or I want to be more compassionate and loving, less judgmental, less judgmental on myself or other people. Or, gosh, I just want to make the most of my time with the people I love. Or I want to show up for work and show up wholly, but I also want to enjoy the heck out of life. My identity isn't just my work. You know, whatever it is that is coming up for you, where can you dig deeper and like really start to expand So you feel that you are moving into a higher state of consciousness because the energy is rich for that over the next three months. And it all starts with this internal decision making of, yeah, I'm committed to evolving my soul in this lifetime. Set that intention on the new moon at the beginning of the month, because I think there's a lot of mojo and winding your sails and spirit guides and your soul and the universe rooting you on. So let them. And you do your part and take things a day at a time. Real quick shout out to my Conscious Collective peeps, and I'll bring it home with this. So I have this Conscious Collective going on, and it is a smaller group of women. And we are having the most amazing, miraculous time. They inspire me. They're intuitive. They show up in remarkable ways. They're teaching me. They're teaching each other. 
but we are working with our dreams together, like individually and as a collective. And I find this to be really aligned. So I want to share it with you all. This is such an interesting energy to work with your dreams, meaning keep a dream journal. And I can do a whole episode on this to really talk about tips and practices to help with dream interpretation, remembering dreams, starting to really work more on the astral plane or in the multidimensional aspects of yourself. But just to start right now, if you're into dreams or you're curious about your dreams or they've been really abundant and prolific lately, Put a dream journal next to your bed and right when you wake up, just make bullet points. You don't have to know what it all means, but just work on the remembering and the cognition of dream time so you can start building that neurological pathway in your brain. It will help you in other areas of your life, but it's a really good muscle to strengthen right now because we are moving into more telepathic communication and that's a good place to practice the muscle of telepathy which is is communication without words it's feelings it's knowing it creates trust it's it's very layered but i think dreams are like a preschool to telepathy so work with your dreams right now and it's fascinating what's overlapping and coming through so Thanks, ladies. I appreciate you. All right, everyone. Be well. Thank you so much for listening to Soul Sessions. If you've got questions, do not hesitate to reach out. Email us, podcast at soulsessions.me. If you love this podcast and you want to hear more, make sure you're following it, liking and subscribing and sharing it with other people. Send this energy out. Share it with other people. Remember, you can always get your dose of Soul Sessions. New episodes drop on Wednesdays. You can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok. It's at Soul Pathology. Or check out soulpathology.com. I appreciate you and your light. Thanks for listening. Does money stress you out? Let FACET flip your financial chaos into clarity. Finding FACET immediately put us at ease. FACET's innovative approach to financial planning ensures your money works as hard as you do, enabling members to experience the joys of having your finances in order. That makes us FACET for life now, I guess. (laughs) Visit FACET.com, F-A-C-E-T.com to learn more. This ad is sponsored by FACET. FACET Wealth is an SEC-registered investment advisor. This is not an offer to buy or sell securities, nor is it investment, legal, or tax advice. These testimonials are from current FACET members who are not compensated. All opinions are their own and not a guarantee of a similar outcome. Tune into the podcast, I Choose Me with Jenny Garth, as the Beverly Hills 90210 alum explores the transformative power of those three words. Discover how you two can choose health, healing, and happiness, and be the star of your own life. I'm Jenny Garth, and I have a brand new podcast called I Choose Me. Join me each week as I continue my quest for contentment and gratitude. Listen to I Choose Me with Jenny Garth on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. For decades, the mafia had New York City in a stranglehold, with law enforcement seemingly powerless to intervene. It uses terror to extort people. But the murder of Carmichael Monte marked the beginning of the end. It sent the message that we can prosecute these people. Listen to Law & Order Criminal Justice System on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Ever wonder what it takes to be a professional athlete? Or how the best in the sport are taking those skills to elevate women's sports to a whole new level? I'm Tiffany Oshinsky, host of League One Volleyball's podcast, Serving Pancakes. Get ready for some unfiltered analysis and authentic conversations about the sport itself and what it takes to stand on the podium. I'll be joined by top athletes and figureheads in sports as we dive deep into match play, mindset, and memories from years past. And you can guarantee that pancakes will be on the menu. Listen to Serving Pancakes on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Renee Stubbs, and I'm obsessed with sports, especially tennis. 
Tune into my podcast each week to hear me and my friends in the community break down the latest matches, including the US Open. Plus, hear from some of the biggest names in the sport about what the future holds. It's about belief. And once you break through that, right. then you know you can win a Grand Slam. Listen to the Renee Stubbs Tennis Podcast every Monday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Presented by Elf Beauty, founding partner of iHeart Women's Sports.